Hey there, everyone. Mike Me back with KTVU Fox 2 in the San Francisco Bay Area. Let's talk about the future. Uh, when office buildings start to reopen, sporting events, churches, schools, in fact, it's happening right now in many parts across the country. And specifically, let's talk about cameras. Let's talk about temperature checks, because uh, that is just something we're going to probably be living with forever. Uh, Daniel Putterman joins me live uh, right now. He's the CEO uh, of Cogniz. That's K-O-G-N-I-Z. I'm saying that right, Daniel? You are, Mike. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about it. You've created something pretty interesting here. This is a, a camera uh, that basically detects fevers. It is. And we're doing something really special here. It's based on software that my team has been developing for three years now. Just all the time will work out perfectly, uh, if we can use that word under this situation, but certainly to help detect temperature. The, the message I want to get out there is, uh, you know, thermal technology is great technology, but it measures the temperature of your skin, not your body. And we all have to remember that your skin temperature can change up to seven degrees during the day, just depending on the weather. So this is something that we're accommodating for here. Okay, what about, because people always like to talk about margin of error. I don't know how long you've been testing it, but uh, where is that in regards to, to what your product stands for? Right? Yeah, you know, it's so interesting, right? So, so, let, so let's, let's talk about a scenario. So let's say we have a camera that says it's, uh, it's within a half degree of accuracy. But let's suppose it's a super hot day and your skin's all hot and you walk into an office building. It takes 10 to 20 minutes to acclimate to that ambient environment. You've only been in there for 30 seconds. You get hit with a traditional thermal gun and you read super hot as if you have a fever, right? So we have to consider not just the accuracy of the camera, but the accuracy of your skin temperature itself. What we're doing is we're actually watching people as they come in using artificial intelligence. And we're able to use that AI to understand what the environment is doing to skin temperature and factor that in to normalize in real time. So we report 0.5 degrees Celsius, plus or minus, which is what the FDA currently recommends. But in practice, we're much lower than that. We're somewhere around 0.2 to 0.4 Fahrenheit. So it's a highly accurate system. So just in the San Francisco Bay Area, I'm going to use an office building, uh, 101 California, Salesforce Tower, whatever it be. I'm just trying to give me this scenario. You're yeah, seeing the crowd. Can the camera actually flag one individual, like walking through the lobby and going to work and say, hey, that person's sick? It can. I mean, what, what it does, and I'll show it to you here today, is we'll actually look at a whole group of people walking in. And you'll see temperatures above their head. And if we see someone that ha is, has an elevated temperature, they turn red and we'll start getting alerts to the security team. And you know what we wanna do is we wanna have a conversation with that person. We wanna take a secondary temperature of them. And if they have a fever, we wanna to work together to make sure that they, they get home safely and that the office is kept safe. All right, uh, well, you said it. I mean, let's see it in action. Right well, now. good, I, I, I love the demo. So let me yeah, show off the system. And, and this is different. I mean, you're probably used to seeing systems that have a, a, a you know, a, a, an infrared image, which, which lo looks kind of cool, but, it, but it's not what we're after. I mean, we want real time data. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up my browser here and share my screen. And you'll see that uh, because of the architecture, it's a really interesting architecture, but it does have a connected interface. And so this means that using our web app, which I'm going into here, or our mobile app, teams, uh, security teams can actually log in from anywhere and get real-time alerts. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna take you straight in. There's two cameras here in two locations. One is on the top of mine, and then down below is a colleague's house. And you can see he happens to be there, and we're getting a real-time temperature. Now, something that's really interesting about this, he, we're not actually taking his temperature right now because I'm getting the side of his face and the, the, the AI knows that the side of his face is no good. But at some point he walked in front of the camera, we got a real time temperature, now we have a tracker on him. And so the tracker remembers through torso and other pieces of information that it's associated with the same person. We don't care who the person is, we just wanna make sure that in a crowd of people, they walk across each other, that we're only seeing one. And yeah. then if you could focus on the upper left hand side, you'll see that at 10.22 a.m., we got it. We got a temp, okay? And then below that, we have another rule set up. And you'll see that that person was alerted because he, he wasn't wearing a mask at that time. So we have the ability to begin to enforce different situations. That could be wearing a mask, making sure that you're within a certain temperature range. Yeah. And, you know, we can even take it a bit further. So, for example, you know, on our notifications, which we're able to get a hold of the guard staff over um, SMS, email, in-app push, et cetera, we can look for other things. So we might, for example, go into that camera and we might say, you know, in that lobby okay let's just pretend I, I realize this is a home but let's pretend this is a lobby uh, okay. i only want at any point in time no more for example than let's say 10 people congregating other than that i'm going to consider it dangerous so we're taking temperatures we're letting people in we're looking for masks optionally and now what i can do is i can actually restrict an area of this simulated lobby 
and tune the AI down to that floor area there and understand at any point in time how many people are there and get alerts if they're not, you know, or, or, you know if they're too many. So the point is here to use AI to give our, our buildings lots of information so that we, act in, we can react in real time to situations that are emerging. I mean, that's pretty impressive, Daniel. And as I'm watching you demonstrate that, I mean, one thing that comes to mind too is privacy. Have you been hit up with any concerns about, hey, thermal cameras, facial recognition, maybe this is a little bit too invasive, although I know you're trying to protect the community, but um, are there any concerns about that? So um, let's talk about two things. First of all, our architecture, which is a privacy first architecture, which means that all visual data, photos and videos stays within the organization. It's not stored by us, it's not up in our cloud, et cetera. Um, with respect to temperature, I mean, I can tell you our position, it's a firm position, it's being supported by a number of legal opinions around the country, which is, look, we're in a pandemic, and this could go on for a long time, and we need any and every tool that we can to keep people safe. Therefore, your temperature is a piece of information that's relevant to keeping our buildings safe. It's not private information. It's not medical information. And we always have the option. If we are uncomfortable having our temperature read, we can always just not go on the complex, right? So there's a mutual decision path here. And, and I think, you know, it's going to be important for all of us to know that, that buildings are taking precautions and creating green zones that, that are, are safe for us to come back to. All right, that's, uh, that's privacy. Let's talk about demand. I'm curious because... I mean, already I'm thinking airports, I'm thinking uh, arenas, uh, you know, the NYSE just opened up this week. We saw that people back on the floor, uh, major companies like Amazon. Um, how many people are knocking on your door right now interested in this technology? Well, here's what I'll tell you. I mean, we, we launched just a short while ago, six weeks ago. We already onboarded 200 different locations. It's growing extremely quickly. I mean, for us, what we have is, you know, it's global cross-vertical demand at this point. People are in different stages of reopening. The temperature is going to be one of the tools that's here to stay. You know, the, the, we're already seeing replacement cycles. People who bought thermal guns are coming to us saying, you know, the next wave of this is pre-screening. So we get out of single file lines. And then let's talk about technology and the new normal. So let's imagine 12 months from now where temperature is still relevant, but maybe we don't want to guard at every entrance. We want things to feel more normal. So with technology like this and the notifications, we can let people come into a lobby. We can get alerts when we need to, and we can decide how to handle that situation. The, the point is the protocols are going to be fluid. They're going to evolve over time. We need tech to help us out with that. I mean, has you, would you say that you're, uh, how do I phrase this? Have you kind of remodeled your business plan, I guess, I mean, pre-pandemic uh, to where we are now in order to, to, to make we, it more usable? We, I mean, we have, we retooled the offering. It just so happens that all the building blocks of the offering, seeing people, understanding the maps of faces, when the angles are off, et cetera, all that AI was directly applicable. And we started, we launched our platform just pre-pandemic and we, we sell to security teams. And as we were starting to talk to our security teams, they really cle clearly needed help. You know, this is before the lockdown. This is before general public awareness. These teams inside of facilities, they were getting wind of something going on. So we, we made a decision, we reacted in real time. We've reorganized the entire offering and company, frankly, to address this, not just for the short term, but really for the long term as well. Okay. What about, uh, are you all in house right now? Or when I guess what the question is, do you have to buy any pieces or parts or components in order to get this together? We do. <laughs> it's a great question. I mean, so uh, all of us have experience in hardware, although we're, we're a software team based here and in Montreal, where we have our AI engineers. Yeah. We, um, you know, if there was a piece of hardware that could support our software, we could have used it. It doesn't exist. And so we created in real time our thermal uh, technology, which involves an Israeli uh, microbolometer or thermal unit, uh, you know, optimized for skin combined with an optical camera that the AI looks at. And, you know, the other thing is uh, the cameras that are out there, they're these big torpedo looking cameras on a tripod. And we thought, well, let's think about the long term. Let's think about an office lobby. This is not the look that people want, right? right. We're trying to show that this is a friendly environment. So we designed something that's about the size of an iPad. It can be mounted anywhere. It fades into the background and it looks nice in the lobby. All right, perfect. Hey, um, you're on to something for sure. I see a lot of growth here, and uh, I do think this is kind of the future. But, uh, hey, Daniel, I appreciate your time and talking about this, and I uh, wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much, Mike, for talking to me. Okay, and just a quick note for all our viewers, you can watch this interview uh, and other COVID-19 related interviews on our 24-7 stream, Coronavirus Now. Uh, thanks again, Daniel. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah.